Hello, welcome along to this video tutorial. My name is Larry Holcomb from Rebel Sonics and I'm also one of the lecturers from the Garnish School of Sound in London. So in today's tutorial video, we're going to have a look at making dubstep drums in Logic using Ultrabeat. We're basically going to build up a beat from scratch using the sounds in Ultrabeat, then we're going to go through how to replace those sounds and also how to route them onto individual auxiliary tracks in Logic so you can mix them separately. We're then going to go through some dynamic sidechain effects, sidechaining an open hat to a kick drum using a noise gate, and I'm also going to show you a revolutionary way of tuning the kick drum to the bass that I've devised. Okay, so without further ado, let's get cracking. So I'm going to go up to the file menu in Logic and just make a brand new project. You can choose an empty project. And I'm going to make a software instrument. When I come down to the input of the channel in the inspector in Logic, I'm going to choose Ultra Beat. I'm going to make it multi-output because that allows me to route the individual hits to separate outputs. If I do stereo, it's all just going to come out of one stereo channel, which is not what I want. Let's drag this window across. So as I said, the way I do it, I program a loop using the default sounds that come with Ultra Beat, and then I replace those sounds with my own individual hits. The reason I do that is I like to actually have the groove in place first before I start playing around with changing the sounds, just because it helps me to hear how the sounds are going to kind of work together within that groove. You can use the sounds within Ultra Beat to make a beat, but although they are good, they're possibly not quite good enough to carry a, a really convincing and credible dubstep beat, for example. So I've got to set my Logic project tempo to 140. And now I'm ready to go. So the sequencer down here is where I, I can go to program the beat. So I switch it on using this little power button. And I also need to enter into full view mode so I can see my sequencer. So the way that Ultra Beat works is that you can actually use it in pattern mode to play back pre-programmed sequences using a MIDI keyboard and that's why you've got these little notes written here with SQ next to them. These are all pre-programmed. I don't want to use a pre-programmed loop and I also don't want to play them back using a MIDI keyboard, I just want it to play straight out of Ultra Beat. So what I'll do is I'll choose the first empty slot that doesn't have SQ next to it, I'll choose that and it will then update so I have an empty loop to play with. The way that Ultra Beat works is, it loops over a two bar period here, and these two bars are, are divided into beats, and you have these helpful little white dividing lines that show you what beat you're on. So we have beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four, and then we have the first beat of bar two, and then beat two, beat three, beat four. So you can use that as a helpful guide and a good reference for where you, where you put the beats, basically. So let's start off. So idea is to put a kick on the first beat of the bar, good reference. And also snares we want to have on the third beat of the bar. Now this beat today I'm going to do is going to be a kind of quite a driving, quite straight beat with kicks and snares very straight, not too kind of um, syncopated. Um, similar to the kind of beat that you'd hear in um, Nero's Welcome Reality. So I'm going to just throw down the kick and the snare there. And I'm also going to layer up a clap underneath the snare. And a bit later on I'm going to show you some dynamic side chaining using a noise gate using the open hat. So I'm going to place an open hat on top of the kick drums there. So next up I'm going to look at putting a hi-hat part in there. So quite a neat feature in Ultra Beat is the ability to control or right click on these lanes here to bring up this pop-up menu. So there's various different function is, functions in here um, and one of them which is good is create and replace randomly that allows you just to throw in a random sequence which is good for say hi-hats. So I press that, if I continually press it you'll see it'll just throw up little random combinations. So sometimes if the vibe's not really coming to you and you're, you're finding it a little bit difficult to find something that you're happy with you can just throw in a bit of randomness and see what comes out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this loop now and I'm going to have a mess around with this hi-hat part until I find something I'm happy with. I'm going to loop two bars in Logic to make sure I don't reach the end of the project and Spacebar will allow me to play.
you've got this kind of a sucking effect to the high axe. I've left out these sixteenths here. Quite like that. So the moment it's all very straight, but we're going to look at humanizing it a little bit later and getting some groove in there. But I do that after I replace the hits. So I also want to add in a ride cymbal. I'm going to use this pedal hat slot just to put in the ride sound that I'm going to replace later anyway. So if I control click again, bring up my menu, I've got a useful f uh, feature here which is add every downbeat. Great for adding 4-4 four, four kick drums, things like that. And it just means I can quickly add in a note on the beat, like so. I'm also going to add in an open hi-hat. So control click again and say add every upbeat. It's going to give me an offbeat open hat. Okay, so that's okay for me to work with for the time being. Now you may be thinking this is sounding a little bit lame at the moment, and that's really just because of the hits that I'm using. I'm using these default sounds. Let's be honest, they're not going to cut it as a modern day dubstep production. And let me just say at this point, if there's one part of this tutorial which is the most important part, it's this part here. Everything relies on you choosing good sounds in the first place. A beat is like a house, it needs to be built on solid foundations. There's no way around that. Don't compromise on the quality of the hit and expect you're going to be able to compress and EQ it later and add reverb and suddenly it's going to sound amazing. That's not the case. If you start off with amazing sounding hits, if you use any processing, you're just going to be sweetening those hits. If you start off with substandard hits, all you're ever going to be doing is processing them for damage limitation. That's it. So I can't stress that enough. Get good hits, get good sounds, and use them to construct your beats. Luckily, I'm going to make all these hits available for free from the Rebel Sonics Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash Rebel So if you want some good hits to play around with, just head over there and you can grab them. So I've prepared some hits on a desktop and I'm going to use them to replace these sounds. The way I do that is just come out of full view mode and Ultra Beat is essentially lots of synthesizers stacked on top of each other as you can have an individual setting for each drum hit. But it can also function just as a sample playback device. So if I hold down control and click on my kick slot for example and I come down to initialize and say sample you'll notice that all this synthesizer stuff here will be reset to just play back a sample from here. So the moment it says no sample loaded, click on no sample loaded, I can load sample, but what I want to do first is actually play my loop so I can hear the kick drum and how it works within the groove. So I'll click on load sample, come to my desktop, and here are the hits I've already prepared. Let me try out some kicks. I'm happy with that as a kick drum sound. I'm just going to come down and turn down my output of Ultra Beat because the hits I'm bringing in are likely to be louder than the hits that are already in Ultra Beat. So, do the same for the snare now. I'm going to carry on the same process for all the other hits as well.
you notice there that I was auditioning that ride cymbal and I had all that lovely d decay on the sound, but it's been cut off now. And the reason is that this envelope four is hardwired to the amplitude and that's too short and it's cutting off my decay on the ride cymbal. So I'm just gonna bring that back, click on that zoom so I can zoom in on the envelope until it's all the way. And now I can hear that lovely decay on the ride cymbal. I'm just going to turn down the ride by coming across here and dragging on this little volume slider. Okay, and I'll carry on now. Turn that down as well. So I've forgotten to replace my open hat here, so I'll just do that last one. I'm going to repeat the same process with the envelope. Turn it down. So next thing I'm going to do is name the hit so I know exactly what I'm doing. If only I was always this organised. So I've chosen hits that complement each other and add to the overall sound of the beat. So when I come to my closed hat here, at the moment it's all very straight, especially in terms of velocities. And a good way of slightly kind of adding groove to a beat is by varying velocities. In the same way, when a drummer hits a drum, he doesn't always hit it at the same velocity every single time. So as I'm playing it, I'm just going to go through and play around with some of the velocities and see if I can add to the groove that way. I don't want to have to do that over the whole two bar loop, especially as it is just simply looping 
i.e. the first bar is the same as the second. So what I'm going to do is just drag this little slider back. So I just have to work on one bar and it saves me having to repeat the process. Okay, so that sounds a little bit more groovy that way. I've also got this swing control here that will delay 16th notes to create a kind of shuffly kind of feel. So I could try introducing a bit of swing as well to, to, um, to also help add to the groove. So I'm actually looking for quite a straight beat in this case because, as I said, I'm going for this kind of Welcome Reality by Nero kind of vibe beat. So um, you'll see later when I add some extra um, melodic elements to the track, I do want quite a straight groove. So I don't want too much swing, but depending on what kind of track it is you're writing, you can dial in different amounts of swing and it can really um, add to the groove nicely. So a quick other adjustment I want to make to this beat is, I noticed when I chose the ride symbol, I like the ride symbol, but what I really want from it is more of the decay of the sound rather than the attack of the sound. It's got quite a, a quite a harsh um, attack to it. If I solo it and play it, it's got quite a lot of snap to the beginning of it, and I don't really want that so much. I want more of the kind of the fizzy, um, high frequency tail of it. So what I'm going to do is just come down to envelope four. I'm going to play the ride symbol. I'm just going to bring the attack of the hit down slightly so I lose a bit of that snap, I'll just try it in the beat so now I've just really got the decay of the ride symbol which is what I was looking for Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with this as a basic pattern. I mean, I'd probably spend um, longer on programming the groove um, normally, but as we're working on a, a time constraint, I'm gonna leave it at that for, for now. So what I would now wanna do is route these sounds to individual auxiliary tracks in Logic so I can mix them separately. And this is why I made Ultra Beat multi-output in the first place.